I had an Irish friend by the name of Tom Garrity. He was a writer. He wrote many of Douglas Fairbanks' stories, and he was often here to dinner. And he said that he never knew uh, what character would appear on the steps. Uh, he said, I was haunted, that he thought I was at least 20 women in one, a whole harem. <laughs> uh, Saturday morning is Mary Pickford. We have a Mary Pickford feature followed by a documentary that is being shown for the first time in Kansas. Uh, it has been shown in, um, um, I think, at one of the festivals in, in Colorado and in California. Uh, and it's the filmmaker, his name is uh, Nicholas Iliopoulos. He is a um, uh, guy from, he graduated from KU and uh, has gone into filmmaking and has made this documentary. He's going to come over and introduce it. He will be with us for, for part of the festival and uh, we're kind of excited to have him, him here and, you know, to, to show it. It is a, an unusual documentary in that Michael York does most of the narration, but Mary Pickford also does most of the narration. Uh, they pulled out radio interviews and things with her, um, uh, lots of different audio interviews, and pieced this film together so that she basically tells her own story. The sight of Mary, a grown woman, playing a ten-year-old girl, warmed the hearts of audiences everywhere. Mary found in the character of the little girl a true friend and her alter ego. I think I was a very serious little girl, but I did later, in later years, live my childhood and all the little characters I played, you know, like uh, old Rebecca and poor little rich girl and Annie Rooney Annie. and Fauntleroy, who was very young. And so I made up for it, and I think that I hadn't expressed that phase of my life, that it was unlived, and that is why, as a woman, I could play a child. That's what I've been told by the critics and by my fans that I did it convincingly and I think it was because it was uh, walled up inside of me and, and that I needed that, I needed to express it. And it's a really fascinating uh, documentary and lots of interviews with uh, uh, people who knew her, uh, Douglas Fairbanks Jr. Uh, Buddy Rogers, her her uh, her husband, and uh, several other other uh, famous folks, Lillian Gish, lots of of interviews with people who are gone and have been gone for quite a while. Uh, Nicholas, I believe, has been spending the last ten or fifteen years working on this particular film, uh, and it's going to be a lot of fun. It should be a good one to see. In 1927, Mary Pickford's last silent film was made. My Best Girl follows the trials and tribulations of a charming shop girl with a wacky family who falls in love with the boss's son. Buddy Rogers was a rising young actor at the time and a strong candidate for her new leading man. I was having lunch at the Paramount studio with Hope Loring. Now Hope Loring had done the adaptation for the film Wings that I just finished a month or so before this. And uh, Hope said to me, uh, said, Buddy, after lunch, I want to steal you for an hour. Is that all right? Well, I didn't know what she meant, so anyway, we got in her car. We drove to another studio, and I was quite impressed with the studio, and we drove over, and here was a beautiful bungalow, and Hope stopped the car and said, Buddy, I wonder if you'll get out and ring the doorbell. Well, I did that, and I pressed the, the button, and the door opened, and, and there was Mary Pickford. I had no idea why I was there, and I had seen Mary on the film back in Olathe, Kansas, and she said to me that she had seen Wings and she said that she liked it quite a bit and that she wondered if I would like to be one of the three men testing for the lead in her, her film that she was going to make called My Best Girl. Well, I said, I would just love it, I would love it. Well, during the interview, I was quite excited and quite nervous to be with America's sweetheart, known around the world, you know, and she casually said to me, well, incidentally, who is your favorite movie star? Buddy, and I said, Norma Shear. <laughs> Nerve, I was really nervous. I thought for sure I'd lose the part. <laughs> but to his great surprise, Buddy did get the part. And it was the start of a lifelong friendship with Mary that grew closer and closer. Years later, he would say that when he met Mary, it was love at first sight. His own acting career was booming, and young women would throw themselves at the handsome Buddy, hoping for a date. But he always responded with, I'm sorry, but the woman I love is married to someone else. 